my name is Rodrigo, and I'm going to talk to you about two things today. The first one is about packaging. Who of you had been using one of these objects in the last week? Could you raise your hands? I think almost everyone, right? I don't know, you know, uh, we knew a bit about this subject yesterday on the talk of Dave, that only around 10% of them get recycled, right? And normally as well, they don't get recycled into new plastic bottles, they get downcycled into other objects. But what probably you don't know as well is to make one of these, you need up to three or four liters of water just to make one of these. So try to save water, not drinking out of plastic bottles. Uh, there's great solutions out there to, to package water or to drink water. Mother Nature gives us coconuts, for example. It's a, an amazing piece of design where you can throw it away and a new coconut tree will grow and new coconuts will, will come. Or my grandfather drink out of this. It's a botijo. It's a ceramic vessel that is self-cooling, so the water gets cool uh, with it. But with my friend Pierre, we started to think how a disposable solution that could replace, to a certain extent, plastic. And we created this. We call it Ojo. We call it Ojo because it's the sound that people make when they see the product, like, oh. <laughs> and, and, and it's a simple way of packaged water. It's probably the most simple way. It doesn't have too much functionality, but it's biodegradable, it's quite cheap, uh, and even you can eat it. So cheers. It's really simple because it's a membrane. Membranes is the technology that nature used to encapsulate things using the minimum amount of material. So things on eggs, on fruits, on cells, everything is membranes. It's natural because it's made of seaweed. Uh, I will tell you a bit more later on about seaweed, but like, it's an amazing resource. Some of the seaweed that we use, they grow up to six meters per week. So imagine you could almost see it grow. It doesn't use farmland. You, didn't, you don't need to water or to fertilizer. And this technology has been out there for a while. The backbones of this technology back then on the 40s that it was used to make fake caviar. So nowadays we, we still use it quite a lot in different industries. And the first thing that we did uh, when we started this a few years ago is put this product in the hands of people and try to see what people were saying. And, and some people were saying, oh, this looks like a fake boob or this is not. <laughs> hygienic at all, you cannot close it back. And, and coming back to, with these questions, kind of like to nature as well, what kind of solutions nature offers us? So if you think on an orange, for example, you have a skin with a small segments inside. So we try to kind of like see if we can do similar things to that, where you have a skins and a small segments inside. When we started this as well, we didn't have too much a clue of chemistry. We were just kind of like in our kitchens, and we made a first recipe. And we put a video online that, that went bananas, kind of like, I think it went uh, 20 million views in the first night, and I think some of the videos got over 100 million views. And, and what that brought into the table is that a lot of people start to replicate it in their own kitchens. So a lot of people start to make the recipe even better with different flavors, and from that we learn a lot. And we decided at that point to, to try to scale up this project, and, and we got a team of chemists in London, that is where we are based, to look further into the properties of the membrane, uh, to see how, how resistant it is, how, how it works with different liquids, uh, to have a kind of like a closer look to it. This is how it looks if you look really, really close to it. And as well to, as well to kind of like uh, identify which kind of type of seaweed was working best for us, uh, which kind of migration this will represent, to milk these double layers I was talking about, and, and to understand as well how much seaweed there is. And then I think uh, Pierre made a calculation that if we replace all the plastic bottles in the world, we will use at 0.2% of the available seaweed nowadays on the, on the planet, uh, that you can obviously start to farm as well. Um, we start to study as well what will happen if you, uh, if you throw this, if you don't need it. So that's an ojo on the, on the right side. And you can see after 10 days it's completely gone. Then the orange peel uh, disappear. Then you have cardboard. You have PLA, that this is kind of like what is called biodegradable plastic nowadays, that is industrially compostable, so you need to kind of like collect it and put it in a chamber with pressure and heat, and after three months, probably it's starting to, to be gone, but like nowadays it doesn't go. Another kind of like multi sachets And we started as well to, to see how we could make this. At the beginning, we just had kitchen tools. Then we move out towards the sausage route, as yesterday we saw. Um, and we end up with a facility in London where we can produce quite a lot. But the main goal of, 
of this production is that it could be done locally. So the latest machine that we, that we made is a 60 by 60 machine, similar to a fridge, that could be transported where, where this product needs to be consumed and it could be done or made on site. Uh, so we can make as well different shapes with this machine. We can make not only round, but as well a square or little pillows and different sizes. We have done quite a lot of events up to date. Uh, so we do quite a lot of things in UK mostly. We have done, I think, this summer probably about 20 different runs. At the beginning, just with other solutions, but now are completely marathons plastic free. Uh, we do a lot of festivals. Uh, we have been selling on retailers. We work with different brands to package their liquids or their contents. We sell on uh, pop-ups, uh, the same way that you will sell fruits. We do cocktails, um, we do juices, we work with different juice brands. We even had a bar in, uh, in London, in South Kensington, where people could, could have their morning energy kick of ginger, for example. Um, we play a, a lot, so we, we used to kind of like organize dinner where we buy different products and we start to think what these products will be if we make them into fruits. Uh, we buy friends. Um, we start to think as well which kind of other products that they are not water could work quite well with this solution, like energy gels, where you can consume it and, and throw it away, or toiletries for hotels, small volumes of shampoo or gels that at the moment are quite hard to, to handle. So you could place one machine in the hotel and, and make all the toiletries, or sauces, for example, for small, such as And that's one of the verticals that has been taking off lately. Uh, so in the last three months, we have been working together with Just Eat, that is a delivery company, uh, uh, doing 60,000 of these sachets distributed in, in 10 different restaurants. So when you order in one of these restaurants, take away food, and you have a sauce with it, it comes with an ojo. And we explore as well the possibility of making shampoos or gels to be sold by meters instead of by liters. If that makes sense, so you could have the conditioner, the gel, and the, and the, the cream on one. Uh, but we know as well as a company that like, flexible packaging is limited in terms of applications. And we want to try to have solutions for different applications of, of plastic packaging. So one of the things that we're working now are liners, so ways to coat cardboard in order to replace that kind of coffee cup that you have in your hand. <laughs> that is really hard to, to recycle because you have plastic stick with paper. But if you have natural fibers, it, it biodegrades in the same way. We have been working as well with nets made of seaweed, with soluble sachets for dry products. So that's, that's the activities that we do most of the time in Skipping Rocks Lab, in the startup that we have in London. But today I wanted to share with you something else. Uh, I wanted to share with you how I think there's three attitudes that you can take away today with you to grow ideas, to make ideas happen. Okay? So imagine if you have any idea that you have in your mind doesn't matter what it is. And, and for me, what it had been working so far is three things. It's really similar to sport. When you play any kind of team sport, first of all, you need to identify where the ball is, where the idea is. And you can do that through observation, through looking, through feeling, through listening. The second thing is to pass that idea to different people. And the third thing is to shut that idea whenever you have the chance. OK? So I'm going to, to go through a f these three uh, attitudes with some samples um, of previous past work that I have done that I don't have too much the chance to share around, so I think I'm, I'm quite happy to do so. And it will be almost like a small tapas. I'm a Spanish, so it's going to be a kind of like a little appetizer, if that makes sense. Of products or projects I have done in the past, so, so some of them are quite amateur excuses for that. Uh, for example, the first one is about looking, about observing how you can come up with ideas. One of the things when I grew up that I didn't like at all in cities are cigarette butts because they are ugly, they smell bad. Uh, and I started to put the small seeds of different flowers that could germinate when the filter gets humidity, when it rains, of different specific seeds. So you create a flower that smells good and, and is nice in the city. Or one other thing that I didn't like at all uh, is, is, is boilers on the city because you sit on it and it goes into your butt. So I create these things to, to go around and, and you don't have that problem. Or when I was a teenager as well, I, I, I didn't like my parents to come into the room without me noticing. Is that sense? So I just kind of like hack the handle of my bicycle so it makes some noise when you open. <laughs> um, 
Or in the university, a lot of people start to put chewing gum under the chair in Spain. It was quite disgusting. So just with a resin, you can make it harder. And you can duplicate that chair several times. Or now I live in London, and one of the things that I don't like about London is the square meter price for different, uh, yeah. So for different apartments, I pay a lot of money for, for this cabinet of, of mops and brooms. So how you can make a, a, a mop or a broom that like appears and disappears, so like you just open it, right? And once you have it, you can use it to steady. <laughs> So that's kind of like how to come up with ideas, how to, how to identify an idea, catch it, and make it yours. Next thing I think is quite useful, at least for me, is to pass this idea with the people that you trust. It's like with your team, right? Like, so if I have an idea and I pass it, let's pass it to Ravi. Can you pass me back the idea? Well, I don't know if you saw, but like, it grows, right? Like every time you pass an idea, it grows. Let's pass it to the top. Can you pass it back? Great, it came, came even bigger. Okay, so it's the way of like growing ideas to share it. It's a bit like a kid. I think ideas are a bit like babies that they have a father and a mother, but like later on, like have they have kind of close friends, and then they don't know how to make money, and they don't know how to speak really well and do anything. But like with love and care, they start to grow and, and become professionals, and, and later on, they can pay your pension if that makes sense. Um, so things to pass. Uh, I have been working as well a bit with, with plastic waste. Uh, this was a project that I started in South America, but the later on it went to Asia and to Turkey, where uh, kids they were making different type of balls. That is the most element, simple way to play. And just kind of like with, with a hairdryer or a heat gun, you can make different type of balls. And you can develop this technique to make different toys, like little llamas. You can see the kid kind of like really enjoying the llama. Or a little project that we did with IKEA when we were students, IKEA came and they say, okay, you have a bit of money to make the, the house of the future. And at that point, David, one of my friends, kind of like was moving apartments, so we spent all the money on the, on the furniture for his apartment, and just with the bags, we just made the, uh, the little house. Um, so it was quite nice. Or the same with paper. Um, with plastic as well, kind of like we had this project, we collect the bebere, and we pass it around different people. Uh, so we were collecting a lot of plastic bottles in different cities around Europe. And what we were doing with these, with these bottles, uh, we were putting them in bags and stuck in the air. So you can create rigid structures out of that. Um, with that structure, you can make some kind of installation of architecture. So uh, we were making arches, but as well small buildings uh, in Venice, in Milan, in uh, Paris, in Poland. And the good thing of this building is like you can put air again and reshape it. Uh, so it's a kind of like it's a flexible way of, of making things. Um, some ideas that I have, I wanted to pass it to you, if that makes sense. It's some ideas that I have on post, so if that makes sense, I want them to grow. So one idea that I have is like cities in the, oui, sorry, cars in the cities are private space occupying a public space, how you can make that a bit more friendly for, for pedestrians. So if you make a bench car uh, where you could sit on it and enjoy while you are not using it, everyone in the city. Or um, I had this idea about how to make artificial clouds, how you can make rain happen, right? So this is, was an idea about these balloons that could be on the ocean. And with, it's quite simple technology. Just with the sand, you can kind of like evaporate the water leave the salt out there, and with the vapor, water vapor is lighter than air, that's what clouds are on the sky. You can create buoyancy and, and float, and then deliver the water where you want it. Uh, so we, we started with this, with this project in London, we did a few prototypes of several metals, we, we somehow had them on, the, on Hyde Park and, and had them uh, flew or, or flying, um, to somehow controlling to a certain extent, kind of like, what they, could, what they could do and how to deliver water. But the scale to make it this project kind of like uh, happen, it's, it needs to be quite huge. If that makes sense, zeppelins or, or, or balloons, they need to be quite big. And it's not a new idea. Again, like the first uh, balloons, they were made of, of steam, not of, not of hot air. Good, so that's, that's how to pass ideas. The last concept I wanted to share with you is how to, how to do, don't wait, just shut. When you have a chance, to score a goal with an idea, don't wait until the, the goal is, is empty. There's, no, there's always going to be something around. So just, just push it. 
Um, so some examples of how I, I shot and sometimes I fell. Uh, for example, in this one, it was completely a failure. I don't know why we tried to cross a lake in Sweden with an iceberg inflatable, and in the middle of the lake, we went down. <laughs> or um, this is a project I did when I was in the university about deployable structures and how to make things expand and contract with a really simple system of scissors. Uh, so yeah, I didn't know too much what I was doing, but like, just with a small system, you could just trigger one of the scissors and and that will create a, a structure. And the idea of these structures is that you could grow them up more and more, but to have a building of 15 storage that you can deploy in three hours. And when you don't want that building, you can take it out. <laughs> uh, and that kind of like project uh, was bounced again with different people, and, and we did some structures in India, and uh, the same principle, but like apply for kids, we, we end up doing in Turkey some, some workshop with kids, uh, making little snake toys. Or um, suitcase. Suitcase as well, like, had been a really wonderful invention, but like, have not been moving so far. So, uh, long, well, in 2012, I was looking into different ways of making suitcase a bit more intelligent. So, playing a bit with Arduino, uh, we end up with this prototype that, again, it was probably not ready to, to launch. <laughs> but yeah, it's. It's, it's an Arduino that follows a Bluetooth sensor in your phone, so it can kind of like go behind you. And, and again, I don't know if you noticed, but like we were quite strange. That's because the video is speeded up, because the product was not ready, it was quite slow after you. So, so that's the, the thing of like moving. We use the same kind of like similar technology to, to mess around with kids in London, just by putting balls that you can control with your phone. So the kids get quite an annoying. So instead of playing the computer, probably they can play with their own ball. <laughs> or bicycles. Um, I like quite a lot to ride uh, bicycles. I like quite a lot deployable things. Uh, so there's not too much a bike uh, that I like that they are foldable. So I make my own bike where you can just open and close when you, when you need and ride. That have big wheels, so you just open and it looks like a normal bike. Um, I, like, I like riding bicycles and I like music, but it's really hard to listen to music while you are riding a bike. But there's two ways as well to listen to music. Uh, one is through air, one is through your bones. So I just put this transducer into the seat of the bicycle so you can feel your music to your butt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or, or some architectural project that I have done uh, recently with my friend Maciek. We were commissioned to, to make um, out of a school that was going to be demolished for making a, a big tower. Uh, still not happening yet, but like it was in Warsaw in Poland. They asked us to make a, a, school, uh, a museum. So it was quite hard to kind of like, it was a temporary museum. Uh, of the Museum of Modern Art and to reconvert that. We have a bit of budget, but what we decided was not to, not to bring anything in, just to take things out. And, and it was a technique that magicians normally use, it's called misdirection, where you just kind of like rented a lot of destruction guns, uh, or destruction machines, and, and we were exploring different textures, and, and just by erasing some parts of the school, we were able to focus uh, where the exhibition was going to happen. Um, so it was a big, uh, big exhibition, if that makes sense. Some of the pictures of it. In each, in each room, we use different technique. In this one, it was just with the hammer, like boom, boom, boom. Um, so those are the three things that I, I wanted to share today with you. Again, it's observing, feeling, listening, passing ideas to make it growing, and then don't miss any opportunity. Yes, just shut. And, and just to finish, um, I wanted to to show one, one little movie that my students, I teach in London, uh, have done with this framework. It's a project that we call Fixperts. Uh, so this is James, Rachel, Phil, and Tabata. And we team them up with different uh, fixed partners, we call it. This is Gabby. Uh, she's five. And it's, again, it's the same. It's trying to observe first, kind of like what, what they do or what she does and what kind of things they can help me with. And once they have an idea, in this case, Gabby cannot fit herself, uh, try to bounce this idea with different people and try to prototype it and try to, to see which kind of things fail, which kind of things work, and they started 
to play with different things, robotic arms and quite complex things. And at the end, they end up with this super simple solution of a spoon that she can wrap around her arm and, and she can feed herself. Uh, so I think it's a wonderful kind of like, uh, I think, example to me of, of these uh, three things of like observing a problem or identifying what you want to do, passing that thing with different people that you trust and make it grow and then yeah, don't wait until it's perfect, just, just do it. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you.